Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at FastGAN PyTorch. What is this all about? Well, this is the official implementation of the paper towards faster and stabilized GAN training for high fidelity few shot image synthesis. Excellent stuff. So if you scroll down, you can see a link to the paper there. There's a link to the PDF. Uh, but the summary here is, well, if you remember, maybe you've seen a few videos previously with uh, StyleGAN 2. Now uh, you need a, a few thousand images for that and if you're training from scratch rather than doing transfer learning uh, then you're probably looking at a few days worth of training and uh, maybe a, a few GPUs, perhaps eight or so. Uh, whereas with this paper you can train from scratch uh, in just a few hours on a single RTX 2080 with less than a hundred training samples. Ooh, okay, excellent stuff. So if we scroll down, there is a link there for the data sets used in the paper. And uh, as you can see, they used 20 data sets, uh, each with less than 100 images, and the GAN converges on 80% of them. So that's pretty good. Uh, they can't summarize an obvious pattern of the good properties for a data set. So um, yes, it's, it's time for us to play. Let's go and have a play. Now, there's a description here. You've got the various models and stuff. Um, but... Uh, the one I was quite interested in, generate video, unfortunately doesn't work. Uh, there seems to be uh, some functions missing there. But let's get this installed. Now install, as always, git clone. Get the repository down from GitHub and change into your newly created directory. I've got a virtual environment for Python and I am using Python 3.6. Uh, I've decided to call this one PyTorch because most of the requirements are just PyTorch. You can always head over to the PyTorch website if you're not sure on uh, how to install PyTorch for your particular CUDA toolkit, uh, but I am using an RTX 3090 and CUDA toolkit 11, and uh, Conda installs all that for me. Uh, there are a few other requirements, such as TQDM, Python LMDB, IPython, and Scikit image. They can all be easily installed with Conda install, or you could just open Anaconda Navigator and search for each of those and install them that way too. Excellent stuff. So once you've got all those installed, you are ready to run and it's just Python train and you point it to your RGB image folder. I've got an image folder over here. There's a few things in there, some animals, some faces, some vases. There's 150, 220 and 169 images in there. So uh, a little bit bigger than 100, but hey, you know, I'm testing things. So there are some various vases and urns and pots and things as an example of what is going into my image data set there. Now, there are also a few other options that you can run with this train. So if we just open up the train, look at that. And they're all down here at the bottom. So minus minus path, we've seen already. Uh, CUDA, the uh, index of the GPU to use. Name, now this is the name that is going to be put into train results here. So uh, I would uh, advocate giving it a name. Otherwise, it will just be called test one each time. That's the default. Uh, default number of iterations is uh, 50,000. Uh, start iter, I didn't see actually working to be honest. Uh, batch size you can change. Uh, image size, I'm using 512, so I'll be using that in a minute. And if you want to start from a previous checkpoint, you can use the checkpoint option there. Okay, so if I was going to train one of these, for example, got one of those there. Let's pop that down in here. Uh, so there I am training, it's going to call it vases. Uh, image size is 512 because that's the size of my data set and if i get training on that it will set up the perceptual loss and uh, just start training and there you go it's, it's doing its thing so as you can see this is running at about three and a half iterations a second and that will take about three and a half three three and three quarter uh, hours to finish so uh, quite quick quite quick indeed let's just cancel that and uh, if you want to do the uh, the resume uh, you need to use the uh, the PyTorch file that starts with all, so all underscore, and they'll, they'll be in your training results once you've got some there. Now, if you want to generate some images, you can just pop into the particular directory. So I've got some here. So let's have a look. For example, vases B16 before my test. So if I pop into there, that's training results, vases B16. Excellent stuff. And uh, this bit on the... Uh, notes there so python eval minus n sample 100 okay so if i do that pop that in there 
and then yeah you see that happens so it's looking for uh, for some reason it's looking for the one ten thousand above i'll just show you the, the models in here so i did the default so that's naught to fifty thousand for some reason it is looking for sixty thousand so what i do in this case just open this eval uh, so there's this checkpoint thing down here on line 65 if i comment that out and i just put args dot checkpoint in there and then if i do exactly the same thing but then pass it the models and the one i've got is fifty thousand dot path oops and i need the image size on it as well mm -hmm. Minus minus C K P T minus minus I M size five twelve. There we go. Then, then it should. There we go. So now, for some reason, it says it's uh it's doing epoch sixty seventy, which don't exist, but it it still generates images anyway. So uh, yes, I haven't haven't had a, a deep look into what is going on there. Uh, but uh, yes, that the, the eval, eval code does work. Let's have a look at some some of those vases. So we got some uh, some fake vases. Nice. Yes. None of these vases exist. Dot com. Um, so that's pretty good. And uh, if you have a look at actually what it, what else it gives you. So in the images directory, you'll see as it goes on training. So here it is training. So that's the first training image. Obviously, it's uh, not very good. And as it slowly, slowly but surely learns how to make vases. You see there at twenty thousand. And we go up to all the way up to 50,000 as it gets a little bit better each time at doing some vases. And you can also see the uh, the augmentations going on. So the shift I've, I've added, uh, I think I added, did I add cut out? No, didn't do cut out on these. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, various augmentations in place. Excellent stuff. Now, what else is going on down here? So there are some other notes. Uh, so there's this uh, third party implementation of the paper over here as well. And that's this one here. So this lightweight GAN. So there's a, another implementation of it that you may like to use. Um, however, with this, um, there were, were there were quite a few strange things I, I discovered um, along along the way. <laughs> um, and uh, one thing is is batch sizes are weird. Um, now, as it mentions here, batch size is usually the first thing that I play with, and the default batch size uh, for fast GAN. Um, is eight. Now, usually I put the batch size up, and um, yeah, that that sort of increased the GPU memory. Okay, fine, it's doing more with the GPU, but it actually ended up decreasing uh, the performance. Uh, and when I dropped the batch size to two, that was basically faster than a batch size of four, or a batch size of eight, or a batch size of sixteen. And similarly, batch size of eight was faster than sixteen or thirty-two, which is okay. Um, Right, that's that's interesting. Um, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't exactly um, what I expected. Um, so for the very first test, I left it with the batch size of eight, uh, and that took about four hours to complete. So let's let's have a look at this one. So this is squirrels with a batch size of eight, and uh, I'll show you the uh, those generation images. So there it is, and it eventually, slowly but surely, learns to generate some rather. Curious looking squirrels. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's with batch size 8. Um, now batch size 1 is obviously um, the fastest. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I tried with batch size 1 and it, the images just did not uh, did not look good at all. Um, so I tried lightweight GAN, which is the unofficial implementation of this. Uh, and remember the, the link of that is at the bottom. Um, and the, the default lightweight GAN settings were very different to fast GAN. So lightweight GAN, it was going to take um, almost a week, so over 136 hours um, to finish. I didn't actually leave that running uh, for the full five or six days uh, to find out. Um, but yeah, that, that was very strange. So I took some, uh, some measurements here with the various different batch sizes. So this is um, the lightweight GAN. And uh, as you can see, the, the the TQDM progress bar also seems to be a little bit weird because that's that's taking like one minute and 16 seconds saying it's 1.53 iterations per second but that looks to me more like about 0.7 iterations a second uh, which is interesting uh, and then I go down to a batch size of two 
uh, which is a lot quicker. You see there, it finishes in just uh, 10 seconds. Uh, but again, that seems more like about three iterations per second rather than 2.2. So yes, um, wasn't entirely sure what was going on there. Um, so I switched over to my my test rig, my other test rig, uh, which has got a GTX 1070 in it, and the exact opposite uh, happened. So when I decreased the batch size on that, the performance also decreased. And if I increased the batch size, then the performance increased. Um, I think it got almost up to three iterations a, a second with a batch size of eight. Um, um, now, the obvious differences there are the PyTorch install. So on this, with the 3090, I'm using CUDA Toolkit 11. And with the 1070, I'm using CUDA Toolkit 10. So, yes, um, there's, there's something weird happening in there with PyTorch. Um, for some reason, it, it's... I'm, I'm seeing the opposite behavior. Um, now, one thing I did find uh, sped things up a little bit um, on CUDA Toolkit 11 uh, was to do this. So set CUDNN benchmarks to true. So that's over here in this train.py. Oops. All right, up the top here. Yep. Okay, so we got the uh, 30x. It, it, I think it's uh, commented out by default, but I commented it, and it was, uh, yes, it... it not very much faster, but certainly a, a little bit faster. Um, also in here, if you want to play with the policy, uh, I think it's defaults to uh, color and translation, but I also added uh, cutout in there as well. Um, there aren't that many um, arguments that you can pass in, but you can see here you can train the learning rate and other bits of pieces in there, such as data loader workers. So I've, I've been playing with these a little bit to try and figure out what on earth is going on uh, with that batch size and, and the weird... Um, backwards performance but yes it, it seems it seems a little bit weird and for some reason this lightweight GAN so the unofficial implementation of it um is is very much slower uh than the other one but the the, the results do seem to be a little bit better uh obviously this goes for 150,000 iterations um by default compared to the 50,000 on fast GAN uh but I, I took that into account um and yeah I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure what's going on uh, this has got a lot more stuff in it uh, so I will be playing with that one as well. But that's that's the main thing for now. So if you've got 100 images or less, you know, you haven't got a very large data set uh, and uh, you want to train something really, really quickly, uh, then yeah, Fast Scan PyTorch, um, certainly worth a look. Anyway, that's it for now. Rodents out.